Good morning. Welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. Today in the chapel, we have Psalms 4 5. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. This, this week's just been kind of trusting everything in Him. So, all right. Off the hook, I don't have anything. Or totally hooked, I guess. Um, in the basket, I have been working on the Around the World. Um, I know you saw it with the purple done. It's the Around the World inspired. It's not exactly Around the World. I didn't buy the pattern, didn't, you know, just looked at it. Hmm, that's a concept. So, um, I think I have two of the four blues for the corner. I don't know, two, four. Four, six, seven, and I'm working on an eighth. So mm, two thirds of a corner of a one side done. So I mean I don't have it done, but I have it in stacks. So yep, I'm hoping to be able to get through this um, pink one, this pink round, and then figure out what I'm gonna do because I think I'm, I think the blue that I have in there is the last of the blue and when I come to the blue row, um, that's when I'm going to change and make it diagonal. So we shall see. How's that for you? Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, in the basket, of course, I still have that one shawl that I'm doing in the sweater for me. I haven't touched them. Uh, it's been hot outside. And I did, like I said, for some reason, I have a harder time crocheting when it's hot than I do anything else. All right. In the pots, I don't have, okay. So <coughs> off the wheel, I got through the tunis, okay, and I got 356 yards. It is a textured yarn, as I thought. Um, it looks okay. It's not great. It's not bad. It's just not not me, not what I like, but I am going to go ahead and use it. I have plans, I think. So, um, always an I think in there. I can use this. Oh, sorry. I think I used this last time to show you the yarn. I'm just going to try and pull it. So, as you can see, all the little bumps and bobbles make just that, bumps and bobbles. There, and here's a good example of me. And this is the end, so it hasn't, see that poof out there, right there? That is a little knobby. Down there, there's a little knobby. Um, yeah, it is what it is. Um, it's going to be a textured yarn. Um, it's totally usable. It's not terrible or anything. Um, I just prefer non-textured yarn. That makes sense. So, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Now, I am going to try. I think I'm messing this up. Um, I am going to try and take the ounces that I have. So I have eight ounces so far. All done up. I had four um, of the Tunis, four of the Targi, and next I have four ounces of the Cross. I think um, I am going to make a shawl, and then dye the yarn. So I was going to dye it, but I think I'm going to use this. Um, I know what order I'm going to use. I mean, it's hard to explain. So I'm going to use the scrunchy uh, cross first. And I'm going to make the first part of the shawl. Um, and then I'm going to use the tunis for the second part. And then I'm going to use the Targi to add kind of drape because it does, it's not as scrunchy. And so I'm going to, 
I'm mixing long wools and uh, downs, downy so. But one thing I found, it's not the first time that I mixed them. Um, I found that whenever you do mix wools, know where you want it to drape and how you want it to flow and look. Use a downy to be a little bit tighter and then use the long wool to add drape. I tend to add my drape all at the um, bottom. I have seen some where they drape at the top and then are conformed at the bottom where they've used downy. So yeah, I'm going to try it. I'm going to spin up the last of that wool that I got at the fiber festival and then I'm going to crochet it and then I'm going to dye it which will be a first for me I normally don't dye um finished projects I normally dye the yarn first and then do the thing but I I'm deciding I wanted a, a, a certain look and I'm hoping to get it in my mind this all should work out. Let's just say that. <laughs> yeah. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, it, is, it is what it is. I got my buddy down here. So the weather changed. Um, I don't know if that's... I'll pay attention to the ironing board. But I forgot if you see it. There's Hitch right there. Hitch. Hey. Look up at mommy. Yeah. He gets like this when the weather is bad. It's been like this for two days, which it's just, the front came in, it didn't cause anything, it didn't even rain, but he, I guess, registers it, and he doesn't like it, so he can't be close enough to mom. Um, Worm's like, I don't care, just don't make a potty out in it. <laughs> so anyway, um, but I am going to try that. If it turns out as good as it looks in my head, I'll be proud of it. If it doesn't, well, I'm going to be let down. This Tunis has already let me down, so who cares, right? I'll just try it. And Most of my letdowns are usable, so it's not like I've ruined anything. It just isn't my thing, and I'll sell it or, you know, give it away. So, all right, in the fields. I can't remember if I told y'all this or not last week, but I topped the garden in half. Um, I took the peppers, which kept flowering and budding, and I put them in the containers out front where I lost the flowers. They're doing really good out there. So, hey, um, they're not having to compete for water with other things. The cucumbers. I just did away with them and the tomatoes. The tomatoes were so burnt up. The bugs had gotten them. Um, some of them got what's called flower drop. They produce flower but never produce a fruit. So I had a couple of plants out there that were big and beautiful and didn't do anything. Nothing. Tons of flowers and then nothing. So um, it says it's a lack of pollinators or whatever. I don't know what, but there's wasps everywhere around here. So I don't know why they ain't pollinating those tomatoes. So, anyway, um, but the only thing left is roommate's okra, which I'm getting ready to do away with it, too, because roommate's not keeping up with the okra that's in the fridge. So, just get rid of it. It's August. It is the hottest part of the year, and it was burned up anyway. You know, we've got less uh, rainfall than any. We're in drought conditions again, and So oh, it, it is what it is, but all right. In RJ's world, he is just rodeoing and doing his thing. Um, he has been doing really good. The air conditioner went out at the farm, and so I made sure that he had some money to take care of it. So we we split the cost of an air conditioner. It is what it is. He had part of it and didn't have the other part, and I'm not going to make him go without heat or without air conditioning, especially when we're in a hundred degree heat wave, you know? So, I mean, we went like, was it 22 days or something or 20? I don't remember how many days, but they actually have a countdown on um, the news of how many days we've been over, 
you know, 100 degrees, and it's been quite a few in a row, you can't go without any relief from that. So he got part of it. I got part of it. We bought an air conditioner, and he is now cooling off at the farm again. Yay! <laughs> um, the one thing I will say is that the air conditioner that we had, you know, we don't have central heat and air at the farm. Um, it's window units. And the thing is, is that we had not bought a window unit in almost, we think over 10 years. So all of the window units that were there were over 10 years old. The other thing is, is that <clears throat> they were, they were top, you know, they, they were good at the time that we bought them. And I think we gave like $250 for them. And that was 10 years ago. So it, they were really good, big, you know, air conditioners. But he found one that was comparable. And I think he said he paid 297 or something. And so that's a good thing. Um, he, it, for a 10 year old air conditioner, finally to go out. I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, it is what it is. It was over 10 years old. Good deal. But anyway, uh, that's really all that is going on. Um, this last weekend, I kept the dogs quiet all weekend. A uh, roommate, roommate and RJ have one thing in common, a summer cold every year. But this year, of course, the minute they got summer cold, they oh, you got COVID. No, <laughs> they had summer colds. And so they both had to undergo, um, COVID test to prove it wasn't COVID so that they could get medication for, um, uh, roommate said that it just felt like there was something stuck in your throat and then it gathered in the chest. So, and RJ said, is all in his head. So, but yeah, they both got a summer cold. It is what it is. Um, my phone was going off. Uh, while I was having a quiet weekend to keep the dogs calm, um, they, they get to playing and get rambunctious. So I haven't, I don't, I didn't leave them alone because then they go stir crazy and they'll jump in the bed and they don't care whose room they're in and they just run and, you know, so, um, with roommate being sick, I just stayed home, kept the dogs calm. I did do a little bit of work on the pond again. One of the things that I'm finding out though, is that the pond is actually snake infested. There are four or five down there, and for the size of that pond, it's that's a lot. As I pull out the logs and the branches, I, I got a very large. It didn't look like that big, but it turned out to be huge and heavy. So I pulled out more branches and and limbs. This was actually a limb. And I found that I'm stirring up more snakes. You'll, you'll find them along the edge of the water. Um, I think the most I've seen at one time is four. And this pond is not that deep and it is not that uh, wide. I know the pictures make it look like it is, but it's not. It's smaller than the one at the farm, considerably smaller. And even the one at the farm, if it was to have, you know, four or five snakes down there, that's a lot for one pond. So... Anyway, uh, I have been trying to get rid of them because not only are they snakes, I think they're water moccasins. They're, they're pretty, they'll turn on you and, you know, come right at you. So I have been carrying a gun down there and one uh, snake has been shot so far. There's two smaller ones and one that is <clears throat> as large as as the one that was shot. So, um, 
and I'm just using birdshot. It makes a good scatter pattern about like that. So if I don't hit it direct, it's fine. But yeah, clearing out the snakes. Um, the frogs are still there, but I know that that probably the snakes is what happened to the frogs. We used to have a ton of frogs down there at the first part of the season, you know, like the first of July. They were teeming with frogs, and you could hear them. Roar, roar, roar. Now there's maybe three or four good sized ones and there's not so many. And I think that's because the snakes have eaten the small ones and I think they're eating the fish and I did see a little bitty turtle down there. Um, he was out on a limb where I couldn't get him. But other than that, just working on the pond this weekend, being quiet. I did fall asleep a couple of times. I didn't even turn the TV. I just had the radio going. Um, and just I snoozed on the couch a bit, which is something I normally don't do. Uh, my sinuses are draining, but they're not. They always drain you guys. <laughs> I'm just, as long as they're draining, I'm good. It's when it quits that I worry. Anyway, so I have decided that this weekend I'm going to make a trip to Hobby Lobby. Oh, I got my contacts ordered too. Um, so I've ripped, I buy a year at a time and I've ripped a couple. I got the eye infection, had to throw those out. Um, so yeah, I had to order another box of contacts and I got that done. So, uh, I am going to make it a sewing weekend. Hopefully Friday on my way home, I'm going to stop by Hobby Lobby and I want to see what shears they have. And I have an idea for a couple of shirts. And we'll go from there. But I think it'll I think it'll be cute. Um, just a very plain. And then for winter, I'll add sleeves. So. But anyway. They'll look okay. They'll add some color to my wardrobe. That's the deal. Alright. Other than that, I think I am pretty much good to go. There really isn't a whole lot going on. Like I said, this weekend I hope to be sewing and crocheting and going from there. So, y'all have a blessed week. Um, know that y'all are in my prayers and just keep on hanging in there. Talk to you later. Bye.